Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be talking about breaking Home Assistant and starting again. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release new videos each week. Why you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there's some affiliate links to smart home gadgets that you can buy for your own smart home and support the channel at the same time in the video description. Or you can support the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. Of course, those affiliate links and my Buy Me A Coffee link can all be found on my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So my production instance of Home Assistant broke. I was running an update the other night and I didn't take a backup off of the SD within the Raspberry Pi and the SD card in the Raspberry Pi just completely died. It's a few years old now, so it's probably about time. So now, at least with my production instance, I have to start again which is obviously a bit of a curse, but there's also a blessing there in disguise. Let's talk a little bit about that blessing part first. The obvious good news is that this failure is really forcing my hand to finally migrate my production Home Assistant instance over to my Home Assistant Yellow. And another blessing that we're going to realize here is that because we're not restoring a backup, none of the old cruft will be left over in the new configuration. Certainly over the years, I've been pretty bad at tidying up the configuration file, even the UI config and some of the old automations for my production home assistant. So there's been a ton of stuff just sitting in the config that's not really in use and it's just kind of gathering cyber dust. Whether it's old integrations that are not updated yet or devices that have failed and been sent off to e-waste, there was certainly a bunch of stuff in that old config that really wasn't needed anymore. And one last silver lining that I'll talk about is that by transitioning over to the Home Assistant Yellow, my Home Assistant Yellow also includes a Zigbee and Thread radio so that my Home Assistant Yellow becomes a thread border router that is also Matter compatible. And I can very easily pair my various Zigbee accessories with it as well. Now, obviously, all of this good is probably overshadowed by a whole lot of bad, but uh, let's talk about some of the key points. None of my old automations are coming back. Some of my config is lost forever to the deepest, darkest recesses of my memory. Possibly the most annoying part is that API keys and tokens that I'd had saved in the secrets file on my production instance of Home Assistant are also gone now too. So I'm going to need to go back and figure out how to retrieve some of those. As part of this process, I've also discovered that the Amazon Alexa app is not great for anyone with more than just a handful of accessories being passed through by Home Assistant. I've had to go through the Alexa app and manually delete all of the Home Assistant entries in there because for some stupid reason, A, there's no bulk method to delete entities that I've been able to find, and B, apparently it's not smart enough to purge entities if you remove and then re-add the Home Assistant skill from the Amazon Alexa app, which is just strange. Now, let's get stuck into a couple of the things that I need to do to reconfigure my Home Assistant. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go over everything because that's going to take forever. But I do want to touch on a couple of things that are probably the most pressing for me right now. Now, I've already set up some stuff because, well, as I said, this is my production server and I need to be able to use my smart house. But there's a couple of things that we're going to do here today. The first thing we're going to do is learn from our mistakes a little bit and be smarter about how we set up our smart home. For the purposes of this video, I want to focus on two key problems to solve. The first one is backups, and the second one is reconfiguring some of my HomeKit functionality. So let's start with backups. The lack of backups that I was making with my Home Assistant setup in the past was honestly just plain irresponsible. 
Thankfully, a new release of Home Assistant earlier this year added a really helpful function that should make it a whole lot easier. In, I believe it was around June, the release of Home Assistant added the ability to mount network shares from Home Assistant and then use them as targets for backups. So let's take a look at setting those up now. Now I've already done this in my production instance, so let's demo this on my demo instance, shall we? So here we are in Home Assistant uh, and we're on my HA demo instance. I'll go to settings here uh, in the left hand edge and I'm going to go over to system. So here we have uh, in the system, we've got this backup section here and uh, you'll see we've got a uh, different back and uh, we've got this data disk where they were saved to and that data disk indicates that they were saved to the SD card that the Raspberry Pi was booted from. So if we back out of backups here, we've also then in this system settings got storage and I'm going to click on storage and we can see the details of our data disk. We've got used spaces 41% and we can move that if we wanted to maybe to a, a USB mounted uh, SSD or um, in the case of a Home Assistant Yellow, if we had an NVMe storage drive installed. I'm not going to do that here, but what I am going to do is click on add network storage and that's going to bring up uh, this window here where we can enter some details. Now you need to have either an SMB or an NFS share somewhere on your network for this to work. This video is not about the process of how to set up an SMB share on your network because your setup will be different. I use an Unraid server. You might have something like a Synology NAS or even just another Windows computer somewhere on your network that's always there that you can uh, set up a shared folder on and back up your data to. So as I say, in my case, I have an Unraid server and I have set up a, an SMB, a Samba share on that Unraid server. So inside this add network storage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a name and I'm going to go has backups and I'll just put demo in brackets here. and it's telling me that it's an invalid name. I will change that. So has backups demo uh, and it can only contain underscores. So we can't have spaces. So has underscore backups underscore demo is what I'm going to call it. The usage, we've got three options here. We've got backup, we've got media and we've got share. So backup is what we're going to use here. Media um, allows us to then play media from this share through our Home Assistant instance. So we could then uh, potentially have our um, music library sitting on the media drive somewhere there, uh, allowing us to then play that through any of our media player entities in Home Assistant. Uh, and the share option here, um, that just creates a share where we can uh, drop files that are accessible uh, both on the SharePoint and on the Home Assistant instance there. So uh, in this case, we're going to use backup and we need to put in the name of a server and it needs to be either a fully qualified domain name or an IP address of the storage server that we want to connect to. So in my case, I've started using DNS names for my internal service. So I'm going to put in here, uh, coruscant.hivemindautomation.com.au. And now we need to choose the protocol. Now, as I mentioned before, we can either use Samba or we can use NFS. I'm going to use Samba. The remote share, we need to type in the name of the share that we created on the storage server. And this needs to be exactly as it is typed on your storage server, because otherwise you're going to have a hard time uh, getting this to work. We created a share called demo pass backups on my server and with this exact spelling and case capitalization, etc. And in the username field here, I'm going to type in Stuart, which is uh, the username that I've set up on that uh, SharePoint, and then the password that I've also set up on that SharePoint. And then we can hit connect. And that's going to take a moment or two to try and connect to that SharePoint. And we've got that there, has backups demo. 
at coruscant.hivemindautomation.com.au and demo has backups is uh, the mount point. So if we head back out to storage here and then go into backups, what I can do now is create a backup and I'll just do a partial backup for now of uh, the Matter server and I'll tap create there. And so that has created August 13, 2023 a matter server backup and we can see has backups demo created one second ago now what i'll do here is i will uh, go back over and i'll just quickly change my screen recording and you'll see here that i have a demo has backups on my server mounted and we've got this tar file that has just appeared in here so that tar file contains our backup if i were to uh, untar that and uh, open that up we'll see we've got core matter server tar gzip inside there and a json file uh, that uh, kind of uh, outlines what is inside that backup so i'll just tidy that up so just to demonstrate that i've already got that set up on my uh, production server if i go to overview and then go to settings and then go into system we'll see in storage we've got has backup set up I've also got another share for SSL, which has my SSL certificate. And we'll go back out and we'll go to backups. And we see we've got these two backups that are sitting on the Hass backup share. Now, if I pop back over to my laptop screen and uh, go here, we'll see we've got the Hass backups folder mounted. And we've got those two tar files in there. I'll just make that bigger so you can see them a bit better. Now, in my particular case, this is backing up, as I mentioned, to my Unraid server. And then I have a cloud backup configured on my Unraid server that then backs that server up to an off-site location. Uh, so I've got double backups, if you like. According to Schofield's second law of computing, data doesn't really exist unless you've got two copies of it. Uh, so with backups out of the way, let's take a look at reconfiguring some of the core things that i really need from my home kit setup now as i mentioned losing all of my home assistant config mentioned that all of my home kit config was also lost being a problem because we use home kit to trigger things like the good night scene which i mentioned in the adhd episode that turns off all of the lights the air cons and it also arms the security alarm now the security alarm is another thing that I'm going to need to completely reconfigure uh, since losing my Home Assistant config, but I'm going to handle that in a separate video because I think that deserves its own episode. Now something I like to do in my Home Assistant configuration for HomeKit is to break it down into smaller chunks uh, of different domains. And that's specifically because there's a limit to the number of entities that you can pass through on a single home kit bridge it's either 50 or 150 i can never remember how many it is uh, and it seems like a lot of entities but um, it's really not when you're talking about things like uh, temperature sensors that also include humidity and pressure or when you're talking about smart plugs that also include energy monitoring with the voltage and the wattage and uh, all of those kinds of things there. You can um, build up to being over that threshold of entities very, very quickly uh, when in those kinds of circumstances. The other thing that's really kind of helpful by breaking it down into different domains and different groups of entities is that if there is a problem with one of those entities in HomeKit, it tends to be easier to track down the bridge that that's associated with uh, to either reconfigure or figure out exactly how to solve that particular problem. Now, in my case here, I've already set up my lights home kit bridge. So I'm only going to go through the climate control bridge and the covers bridge. The covers bridge includes my garage door opener. Uh, and I'll do the rest off camera because I don't want to bore you by going through my entire home kit setup. So back over here on Home Assistant and we need to make sure that I'm on my production. So HA prod here and I'm just going to go into settings and then devices and services. Once we're in devices and services, you'll see that I've got HomeKit bridge already here and that if we drill in, that's my Hass bridge lights there that I've got set up. What I'm going to do here is click add entry 
and then we can choose the domains to be included. All supported entities in the domain will be included except for categorized entities. A separate HomeKit instance in accessory mode gets created for each TV media player, activity-based remote, lock, and camera. So in uh, domains to include, first of all, I'm going to find the climate domain and I'm going to submit that. And now to complete pairing, follow the instructions in notifications on the HomeKit pairing. So I'll click submit and uh, we need to choose a location. Now I've created a new area in my Home Assistant called utility. And that's just for things like this um, that are kind of utilitarian. Uh, there's not really a reason to have them in a specific room. I'll click finish there. And now if I go to notifications, we've got the HomeKit pairing information there with the QR code or the pairing code. So over on my iPhone here, I can tap the plus button in the top right hand corner of Apple Home and tap add accessory. And then we can scan that QR code and we've got a bridge, we'll tap add to home. It's an uncertified accessory, we'll tap add anyway. Uh, so, so for the bridge location, I'm gonna put that in utility on uh, HomeKit as well, and I'll tap continue. And while we're waiting for that to go through, I'm going to just quickly rename uh, the bridge in Home Assistant to uh, Hasbridge Climate, uh, just to make that easy to figure out. And I'll tap okay there. And then the bridge name on the phone, I'll also change to Hasbridge Climate. And this uh, speaks a little bit to what I was saying before about being able to figure out which bridge needs to be uh, modified or sorted out if we're experiencing some difficulties. So I'll tap continue on there. And we've got bridge added to the hive. I'll tap continue again. We've got our lounge AC. This thermostat is connected to Hasbridge Climate. I'll tap continue and we're going to put that in the lounge room because that's where it is. And it's lounge AC, we'll tap continue. And uh, the thermostat details, uh, use the name provided or enter a custom name for each item. I'll just leave that as is, we'll tap continue. And we've got an automation we can turn on. Uh, we can set it so that when the last person leaves the home, we can turn off the lounge room fan. I'm just gonna leave that alone, I'll tap continue. And thermostat added to the hive and we'll tap done. And so now if we scroll through here, we should find in the lounge room, we've got our AC there and we can uh, go into accessory settings or we can uh, tap in and change everything that we need to, including the fan speed, uh, the function and uh, the temperature settings, etc. So with the climate setting done, let's now also take care of the covers. So I'll tap add entry again and domains to include in the drop down, I'm gonna select cover. Now cover is blinds and also a garage door. Uh, and there, there'll be some more stuff coming up on covers in a future video. Uh, I'll tap submit now with cover selected. And again, we're going to tap submit and now we will put the new entity into our utility location. Tap finish. I'm going to rename it to Hasbridge covers and okay and then click on notifications here and the same thing we'll tap the plus button in the top right of home add accessory and scan that qr code we've got a bridge add to home uncertified add anyway our bridge location is utility i'll tap continue and we'll change the name of this to hasbridge dash covers and continue bridge is added to the hive we'll tap continue and now we get to add the accessories so we've got the trad free blind uh, we'll tap continue and that is in the kitchen i'll tap continue and uh, the blinds name we can change the name if we want i'll leave it as trad free blind we'll tap continue and uh, again we can set up an automation when the last person leaves home we can close that uh, i won't turn that on again and i'll tap continue uh, blinds added to the hive, we'll tap continue. And now we've got main garage door. The garage door is connected to Hasbridge covers. It's really important that this shows up as a garage door uh, because if it does not show up as a garage door, uh, you'll have not a great time trying to use this with Apple CarPlay. Uh, and I'll pop up a screenshot of Apple CarPlay shortly, provided this works. I uh, will tap continue here. 
and the garage door location is obviously going to be in the dining, no, it's going to be in the garage, we'll tap continue, and garage door name, I'll just change that down to garage door, and we'll tap continue. And so now we have a couple of different automations that we can choose from here as well. So we can do things like when the garage door opens, turn on the light, when the last person leaves home, close, when the first person arrives home, open, those kinds of things. I'm not going to enable any of these because I think that we should try to keep our automation specifically in one location as opposed to having automations running in HomeKit, automations running in Home Assistant, automations running in Tuya, all of those kinds of things that will then uh, end up causing confusion when you're trying to troubleshoot automations that are, are either not working or working when you don't expect them to. So I'll tap continue there, garage door added to the hive and we'll tap done. So uh, we've got our trad free blind there. And uh, if we find our garage, we've also got the garage door, which is closed. Uh, and we can drill in there and just actually open the garage door. I'll close that now. Uh, but you can see that we've got uh, that there, uh, open or close. And uh, I'll just go and make sure that that actually closed. So now that the covers and the climate control are in Home Assistant, I've attested that my garage door is available in CarPlay, and I'll put that screenshot here. So we can now make use of that garage door opener working in CarPlay, and uh, the climate control entities are also passing through to Apple Home which means that we can now uh, recreate our good night scene in HomeKit. So let's take a look at that. So back over to HomeKit here, and I've got my good night scene here. And if I uh, tap and hold and go edit scene here, uh, we'll see that uh, we've got a lot of lights in here that are turning off because I already passed my lights through earlier. And I'm going to tap on add or remove accessories. and inside here really the only thing i want to make sure of uh, is that the lounge room thermostat and fan are selected and i might also just select this trad free blind here as well so i'll tap done and uh, now what happens as i mentioned in the adhd episode when we add something into a scene in HomeKit, it adds it in the state that it is currently in so at the moment, the thermostat is heating set to 20 uh, and the uh, fan is set to 100%. Uh, and uh, the good news is that the trad free blind is already closed. But if we wanted to, we could set that to open when we trigger this scene. Obviously, we wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but maybe we could have a good morning scene that opens. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, tap the fan to make sure that that's turned off. And I'm going to tap on the thermostat and set that to off as well. And so now we see that everything is set to turn off with that scene when that gets triggered. So now if we back out, what we can do if we were to just either tap that good night uh, scene there, or if we were to say Siri good night, that would then trigger all of these things to be turned off. So those are the two things that I wanted to get fixed up after breaking Home Assistant and having to start again. With the HomeKit good night scene set back up, we shut down heating and lighting with just the one voice command to the digital assistant at night time, and that helps us to save energy by not heating the house when it's not really required. With the mounted SMB share, every time I run a Home Assistant update, Home Assistant is automatically backing up the config to the share on my server. So there's at least a significantly reduced chance of me ever having to start from scratch again. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helps you in your smart home journey. Be sure to drop a comment down below with home automation ideas that you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow HiveMind Automation on Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider changing that now. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get a notification when I release new videos, which is normally every week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Any contributions that you make through buy me a coffee do get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. 
don't forget to check out my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.